press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Namaste and welcome to this 7 p.m. show today. And uh, we are going to talk about narratives, as you know. And uh, talking about narratives, there's this uh, beautiful book written by Shri Vikram Sood, who is here with me. The name of the book is uh, The Ultimate Goal. And uh, it's all about uh, construction of narratives that uh, he is deconstructing how to construct narratives. So welcome to the show. Thank you, Sanjay. Thank you for having me over. And and, I look uh, forward to our discussion. <laughs> and uh, the book is uh, actually this uh, book. Uh, and request my console to please uh, display the book. Uh, actually, I am overwhelmed by the one-liners. And in fact, some of them today I tweeted also. Uh, yeah. Just uh, I saw uh, those. <laughs> two of them I'll uh, yeah. I'll read out for the benefit of the viewers. And uh, why uh, it will click with the viewers immediately is because these are the sort of things that I've been saying all along. Uh, but you captured it beautifully. One, okay, it is the bigot who is dangerous. And the most threatening is the self-proclaimed liberal who tolerates no opinion except his own. <laughs> I think it's a very pithy remark. And it captures so much. Yeah, I think uh, probably people have spent reams and reams, uh, writing reams and reams explaining this. But you captured it beautifully in this uh, one little sentence. Thanks. And the other one about narratives, I think that uh, um, goes very well with the essence of the book. Is that uh, the real power comes not from the barrel of a gun, but from those who control the narrative. So beautifully said. Sir, uh, so of course, uh, we can keep talking about the book. And if we start analyzing the book into uh, some depth, then uh, maybe we'll require 10 sessions, but we've got only <laughs> one right now. So. Uh, I would start with what I've written in the description. And uh, first, the importance of uh, building a narrative for a country. Let's focus on the country, though it is very important for the societies and for communities also to build their own narratives. But uh, for the purpose of this episode, uh, we restrict it to the countries. And as you said, and as I put it in the description uh, below the um, video, that facts are not always what they appear to be, but are often what they're perceived to be. Thus, the truth is not supreme in the affairs of state and is often hidden within a bundle of lies, half-truths and innuendo. Instead, perceptions built on narratives become the accepted truth. So, sir, would you like to begin on that point? I think I, I've said it to say that, uh, that when we look at a state's pronouncements, we tend to accept it as they are. Now take the case of, um, I mean, a, a story can be perpetual. That is, I am superior to the other man. That's a, that's a narrative in perpetuity that you have to say, my culture, my religion, whatever. Then there are tactical uh, uh, narratives, which are not based on truth. Um, the Iraq war is a great example. There was um, the, the Americans went in saying there is WMD and Al Qaeda. Right. None of them existed. We everybody knew, but it was accepted. You went in, and uh, after that, everybody forgot about it. It became a different kind of uh, war there. So uh, 
that's that's the short term narrative to obtain a particular goal and um, if you if you are able to sustain this for the duration of the period you need then it's fine you needed it only to be able to enter iraq there were after it didn't matter and uh, you would carry on doing what you wanted to do and and you know we know the story after that what happened so that is a perception that you have created through the media that you control the the, the means that you control and everybody is either convinced or they just accept it and go along with it and uh, even the long term narratives about superiority of so what was uh, i'll just get it probably it's fishy's facetious to say it. what was stars and afrol in in africa a white man in leopard mm-hmm. skin who could speak all the african languages even he could speak to the apes and he could control the situation that's the superior white man keeping africa safe for the for the queen empress he could even take on the germans in in kenya or tanzania and and uh, come out victorious so this is the kind of narratives that are built and you and you use fiction you use uh, drama you use art for conveying these messages and they don't have to be um, loud proclamations all the time there is subtlety about it the subtlety of tarzan of course he's a superior human being superman who could do everything superman. right yeah he was a superman of the first world war uh, yeah. but later you had superman of the uh, 20th century so right, these, right. Are, these are narratives that are creative and we all love them and we cherish them and we all read about it and we think things like this exist maybe in your childhood they be memory goes there so um, but uh, then there is innuendo there is subtle hints that are given to you and um, you you know it's conveyed in different ways that that things things are different from what what i say is different from what i mean and what i do the three are not related Okay. And very that's statecraft. Right. Yeah, that's statecraft. And so mine is not a critique of the system. Mine is not. I'm not complaining. I'm telling you how it is. That's that's the real life. That's the real world. So, yes, that's the real world. And very often, I think uh, we romanticize the real world to think that it is uh, quite uh, different. Yeah. And. Uh, mm, that doesn't quite work and for instance the western world and the colonialism itself was exalted yeah and it was kind of a narrative was built and uh, you mentioned a beautiful instance that uh, mm, <clears throat> 2.5 million indians were fighting in the world war but uh, yeah. when the victory parades came Mm-hmm. they were absent and even though they were present even in dunkirk yes yeah. in the dunkirk landing but yeah, when the victory not. parade came they were completely absent yeah and and uh, who remembers rwanda and burundi the rwanda massacres the indonesian massacres no one as a, as a, as a, this this famous author uh, said in his book in in his in inaugural in speech in his acceptance speech and for the nobel prize and when he said that you know as far as you and i concerned it never happened nothing ever happened even while it was happening it wasn't happening that's the kind of storylines that are cleverly built uh, to to convey uh, a message or to ignore a message ignoring or sidelining is just as important i imagine yes i think you brought it out in the first chapter itself 
when you talked about uh, uh, Kennedy and the assassination mm -hmm. of the two Kennedys mm -hmm. and the power of the American military industrial complex mm -hmm. that even the most uh, powerful, supposedly the most powerful person in the world, the yeah. American president was actually powerless before this military industrial complex who actually had the narrative. Yeah. He and his brother both were gone. Right. And uh, the inquiries didn't really reveal much at the end of the day. So uh, there is somebody else who's building narratives, not the man who sits in the, in the in the presidential chair or the prime ministerial chair or wherever. So it's stories are built elsewhere. You know, there is that famous book by Robert Ludlum. I think it's the Mathari Circle. Yes. Uh, and where six or five men, mysterious men, get together in a, in a secluded house. They all come in black Cadillacs and they go into that building and then they sit down to decide the fate of the world. What to do next. So if, if 6,000 rich people in America or the West control levers, out of which four of them made more than a trillion dollars since COVID-19 erupted, can you see the strength of the power of this system which is coming now? Now they can... You're reaching a situation where the corporate sector will censor you. What did Twitter do the other day? They blocked out uh, the president of the United States. Yes. <laughs> so they can do it to anybody, anytime. And and the and Google has said in Australia that if you don't agree, we will knock you out. You you will not be able to access Google. So this corporate world is going to be totally different. This is the new narrative that is building. Quite right. And I think you mentioned this. Uh, and um, you also mentioned the power of the uh, Hollywood, other than yeah. the power of the media in building yeah. narratives and uh, projecting the uh, United States as the yeah. next great savior. Absolutely. And the American role as the reluctant imperialist. <laughs> I like that term, reluctant to be realist. Yeah, we didn't want to be what you guys are forcing us to be. You can't look after yourself, so we'll better do it for you. That's that's how you... Uh, because Hollywood and the intelligence agencies had a close interaction. The CIA, as I say in the book, the CIA had a representative there. <laughs> in Hollywood, who would look at the scripts, who would look at, uh, would give suggestions, you know, and, and sort of say, no, this can't be done, or that shouldn't be done, this is now it is. But um, I wish Bollywood would do that, with their power of the, uh, to capture um, the, the imagination of the people. If they would, now I, I can see some movies are coming out, which it seem to be closer to reality, but we never had them in the past. It was, uh, it was terrible. Some of <laughs> for the longest spy time, movies, spy movies they were subverting the Indian civilization for the longest yes. time. Yeah. So we have, to, we have to go a long way in our own. We have to make up our own minds. Who are we? What are we? What do we want to be? Quite right. Amen. Well, uh, that brings us to your um, uh, last chapter. I think uh, we can devote the longest time on your last chapter, and that is about India. And uh, quite rightly, you have uh, talked about the India story, how India is lacking in most of this. And actually, we got our narratives from the West uh, because we had. Uh, supposedly a peaceful transfer of power 
whether in fact i often say that this was not really independence it was actually transfer of power and the british uh, got the government and the prime minister they wanted so yeah. it was some kind of a continuation of not only the western uh, government through other means through proxy but also a continuation of uh, the western narrative uh, the western narrative was all about uh, the indians being inferior the indians never having been um, a nation uh, the indians uh, being totally divided fighting with each other ridden with caste system ridden with the backward attitudes that was the narrative that was handed down to us and we did nothing to change it i think we did nothing to change it for almost 70 years no we didn't we accepted that and you know on on uh, on the 14th of august we had one particular narrative which was the british were using indians to play their narrative they didn't have the means to do it they couldn't post an army which would be numerically enough to control india so you had to control india through indians either by dividing and ruling or or by coddling up to certain section so that's what they did they used us to rule over us they 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 took our property charged us rent on that took that money away built factories from our resources and paid and sell sold the stuff back to us so it it was it was a situation that we we accepted for a long time and uh, that has that had to change eventually i we you know when when i went to school in early uh, 50s i was at sarai school in 49 we didn't have history books which were in them we couldn't possibly we have that there were books written about Brit- india by the british in their way and that's my school didn't teach history at that time perhaps rightly so but other schools did and they taught history as was written by the british by the ruling class and we carried it on we carried those impressions on as the young mind gets uh, imbibes those ideas very well so when you start to see what happened in 62 or 65 or 71 particularly 70 even 65 particularly 71 then you realize that uh, you know here is a democracy trying to f- help another country become free and democratic and uh, the americans the leaders of uh, democracy and freedom are fighting for the other side or supporting the other side so you realize that in state craft in in rule in the business of ruling morality is not an issue only interests are and you cannot control everything by the gun therefore you control it through the narrative white man's burden and so on and so forth it comes from there to to maintain superiority put them down when required keep them divided It's, it's a ruling class they will do what they have to do to keep their ruling rule intact it's for us to change it and it's for us now to change it because i think we have grown up enough now <laughs> are you quite right actually the narrative not only got uh, continued but uh, later on when the academia was handed over to the marxists it uh, even got strengthened because uh, people did not realize that uh, they had an ulterior motive and people forgot about the gangadhar adhikari thesis that they had developed prior to the independence in fact uh, uh, today i again uh, uh, tweeted about uh, uh, sitaram goel writing he says that uh, islam has uh, never really created about uh, bothered about creating narratives or uh, making uh, arguments based on reason 
they have uh, relied mostly on sword and uh, on the street riots and uh, the communists were the ones who gave them the intellectual heft before the partition mm. Mm. they they used the pen to give them the justification for what they were asking and what was completely untenable otherwise and these very people they were given the task of narrative building in the 60s so you can imagine we actually slid backwards instead of going forward was it what, did we do you think we gave it to them or we just ceded ground well uh, in the 1960 when this uh, uh, schism happened within the congress and mm. uh, Mrs. Gandhi needed the support of the communists uh, who had some 20 or uh, 30 odd seats in the parliament. At uh, that time, uh, they just asked for uh, control of the academia. That is the time that uh, JNU was uh, built for them, actually. JNU is the Marxist project. Mm -hmm. And uh, later on in 1971, she appointed Nurul Hassan, who was uh, not just from the uh, Aligarh School of History, which Left. was also, he was also a dyed in the wool uh, Marxist. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, they got the hold of the academia completely. I remember appearing for the civil services examination in early 80s, 80, 80, uh, 84 actually, so 84, 85, those are the two exams I took. And uh, because I basically come from an engineering background, I did not have uh, mm. these subjects and I chose to go for history and political science. So I came for some coaching in Delhi and mm. it was drilled into me. Look, uh, these are the authors, you know, you have to write like Irfan uh, Habib's yeah. version, you have to write mm. Romila Thapar's version. Today yeah. I realize these are the grandees uh, who wrote about uh, Romila Thapar writing about ancient India, did not know Sanskrit. And uh, the medieval historian, the great medieval historian Irfan Habib, didn't know Persian or Arabic. <laughs> These mm -hmm. were the people who were mm -hmm. <laughs> writing the narratives and giving what is called clean chits to all the Islamic brutalities and all the Islamic marauders. And so much so that in Delhi, you will find the worst of them. You will find the Firoz Taglaks and you will find the Lodis and you will find everybody, but you will not find the people who actually fought for uh, keeping the uh, keeping their own independence. So you will not find Rana Sangha or uh, you will not find uh, the great uh, Cholas or, or you will not find the no, great history, of history the was only Mughal. History yes, of yes, Northern yes. India. Only Delhi. One Sultan, one King, every Sultanate, and they, they, these fellows coming in. And you know the time when this chap uh, Khalji was destroying Nalanda. Bakhtiar Khalji, yes. Uh, and uh, during uh, that period, or maybe just before that, I don't remember the exact dates, Oxford University was created. And yes. I think Heidelberg. Now they've, they've got universities created. We are destroying universities here, or people were destroying universities here. And, and I think from then on, for 700 years, 600 years, we didn't have formal higher education. Yes, exactly. And that was the time that, uh, you know, India missed then we lost the ground. We lost education. ground. And when we got independence, we didn't have a uh, strategic vision of what the world, real world is. It was all uh, good intentions and morality and uh, high ideals. We, we are a peace-loving nation. We never fight a war. We never go to war. Why do you say it? Why do you have to say that? I mean, I've never conquered. The Cholas went. Cholas did. Yes, yes, yes. Cholas so went. Why, why, not, why, why not take pride in that? They, they were not... Uh, It's a part of history, so uh, let's accept it. And they ruled for and, twelve hundred years. And, and then, yeah, one of the longest, the longest empire, the duration. 
We don't the talk about problem. the homes. We don't talk about the homes. We don't talk about anything beyond Calcutta. We yes, we talk don't talk about, about the Karakotas. Sorry? We don't talk about the Karakotas of Kashmir. That uh, no. They had the uh, uh, empire name? right from the Caspian Sea right down to the south, uh, up to the Rashtrakutas and uh, yes, right up to Assam. That, that, is, that is what we have to keep bringing up now. We have to cherish our heritage, remember our history, and plan for the future. If you can cherish your heritage, learn from what, what went on, only then, I mean, don't live there. I mean, I don't recommend that we live in the past, as some of us tend to do, and say, we were great, therefore nothing more needs to be done. No, it's, it's a it's 21st century, we've got to move on. Mm -hmm. And 10 years from now, 15 years from now, things will be a lot, lot more different than what they are today. So unless we start doubling up and really getting down to it, it won't happen. Our youth bulge is three, will not reappear again for 300 years. If you miss it now, it's gone. Right. Right. I think yes, I think we missed the bus uh, big time building the narrative when we actually uh, basically bought the Pakistan narrative when we rehabilitated everybody who had campaigned for Pakistan and not just rehabilitated them, integrated them in a way that integrated their narrative as well. After all, what was Kashmir, if not a concession to the two nation theory? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, the problem lies, I think, that we have been unable to understand the true nature of Pakistan. Pakistan is not going to ask, uh, accept peace. It cannot. It is in its creation that Hindus and Muslims cannot live together. So how can they accept peace? And as they become more and more fundamental, fundamentalist, radical, as it creeps into their army, you will find that they will go further and further away. So we have to, with Pakistan, we just have to learn to live as a, as a neighbor who's there, but there's nothing you want to do with it. And he will keep, keep, uh, keep up his his act, his, his actions, well, we have to handle that. So that that political thing is not I what I what I think a narrative has to be about us as a people as, a, as what we were, what we are more and more should to take pride in yourselves. To take pride in how beautifully, how scientifically, how meticulously our people constructed those temples in the south. There must have been knowledge to do that. There must have been scientific uh, abilities, technologies. I mean, how do you build a on a pillar in a temple, a bell which rings inside, but you, but you, it has been carved somehow, it has got there. How was it done? It's not, it's a single piece, but it's there. This, and, and there are temples where the light shines in the same spot, same window, every year at every uh, equinox top to bottom, four, four windows, and if the beam goes through them every 23rd or 21st of every quarter. So yeah, we had that capacity, we had that science, we had the ability. So let's, let's, let's remember that, let's remember those people. Why are our universities named after Einstein and Newton and 
so on and so forth, or, or, or not uh, universities, but uh, I think many of our institutes uh, or um, private sector companies are named after these fellows. Why? So, in fact, uh, this uh, one aside on this, that uh, look at the uh, I think the car manufacturing in India has gone up by leaps and bounds. But except the first brand, first Indian brand, Maruti, hmm. there's not a single brand that has an Indian name. No. No, we don't. <laughs> so just look at this. Yeah, because you can do ISRO. You can do space satellites, but you can't do these other things. I don't understand why they're not able to do it. I'd like to read uh, another uh, passage from your mm -hmm. last chapter on India. Mm -hmm. uh, this is you talking about uh, immediate post-independence period. Mm -hmm. You say the Indian leadership and the elite of, the, of that time were divided on how to deal with Hindu demands, many of them legitimate. The more westernized leaders, Nehru included, did not wish to be viewed as champions of Hinduism and preferred to be liberal left-wingers and secular modernists. This led to inevitable distortion in the polity that have continued to this day. Mm -hmm. I think very, very pithy and uh, of course the Nehruism. Nehru is often vilified by the present dispensation. But according to me, Nehruism continues unabated. Yeah, I guess you're right that some of the basic things are still there. But you know, Let's not con sort of write, write off that period completely as a, as a loss. There were, there were mistakes. There were lots of mistakes. Things could have been different. You can always go into a what if theory. What if Patel had been PM, not Nehru? Would things have been different? Would we have handled Tibet differently? Or would we have handled uh, Kashmir differently? I, that's, that's a hypothetical situation. But after when when the 47 war started, there were two British generals on either side commanding the Pakistan and the British Indian armies. So those are those are surreal situations, bizarre uh, situations. And they, they said that no British soldier would fight in these campaigns. So you guys fight it out yourselves. We had, we had very little option then, you know, you got caught up with your socialism and ideals and uh, the, the Cold War had begun and we didn't know, we were not willing or able to see it or see that the West expected you to take sides. And socialism and neutrality were evil. So they went to Pakistan. They offered. We said no. They went to Pakistan. And actually, Pakistan is what they wanted. If you, if you, you know, you've read history. It is Pakistan, the northwest frontier, and Balochistan is what they wanted to be under their control. That time, the the bugbear was Russia, Soviet Union, not China. So that was the portion they wanted to be under their control to keep the Russians away from the warm waters. And they got it. So ever since then, uh, Pakistan has been able to play its cards as a supplicant or as a useful ally or whatever you call it. And we we were we led the non-aligned battle campaign, and that's where we are today. Yes, I think you said this. <laughs> Uh, I may quote a little passage. It says that real politic demands that as a nation seeks a bigger role in the world community, it is better to be feared and respected 
that just yep. love. Yeah, true, absolutely true. I mean, let's not get dreamy eyed about ourselves. <laughs> People, that's what if you, if you, if in this kind of an activity, if you are not taken seriously, then it's over. If you are not able to draw red lines and say this is it, beyond this, I will not accept it. They don't have to be. Uh, you don't have to bully anyone. You just. It's done by innuendo. It's done by example. You have your own narrative to say, I will not accept this kind of. You can you can criticize me as much as you like, but you will not ally yourself with A or B or C. We haven't we haven't had the capacity to do it. Look at what Nepal and uh, Sri Lanka are in a position today. What position they are in today? Deliberately or choice or. Uh, without a choice, the Chinese are getting stronger there. So we wanted to be loved, no, and that's what we got in return. Yes, uh, I think a little bit of uh, overdose of uh, Vasudhaya Kutumbakala. Okay, yeah, maybe that's also there, and uh, the. The, the the surprise was for 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 the world I would say was Uri and um, Balakur. Regardless of what happened, that was the narrative. The other narrative was when November two thousand eight happened. We did nothing. That was narrative then. Ke kuch nahi karenge. So we are getting out of that. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that uh, we're still preserving Nehruism to the to the hilt, but it takes time. You know, when a when you move a train or a fast moving bus, it has to take a wide arc and come. Otherwise, it can topple over. So. It takes time to to ne negotiate, and for for the opposition, they have no other means except to go out on the streets for everything. They don't want the constitutional route for for getting back into power. I uh, guess I think that is the new narrative that is uh, going around, and uh, of course, uh, most of the opposition actually is. Uh, uh, informed from the old, uh, what is called the socialist, secularist, uh, uh, Nehruvian standards. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is how this narrative, you mentioned this, that uh, Hindu nationalism is dangerous. And this is oh, yes. uh, oh, very this dangerous. action in, uh, in the Western world. Yeah. Because if and among India's liberals. <laughs> Yeah, they are the ones who promote it also. Right. As as one ambassador told some, one European ambassador told somebody that, you know, our newspapers write stories that you write here. They pick them up and re refurbish, re re churn them and publish. Or you have your people going outside and writing. So we accept it. Amko kya? This must be true. I haven't seen any uh, American writing an Indian newspaper criticizing his own country. Have you? Absolutely. So, what do you suggest? Uh, the, let's uh, look at the solutions. How do you suggest we go about it? Because after this, we'll go to the question answer rounds. And before that, I request all my viewers to so please uh, like this video and uh, share it around and also subscribe to the channel and of course uh, we do request you for your support uh, so sir what are the solutions take it there's no short-term solution there's no quick solution this is a long game and we've lost time 
So you have to start building your stories now. People have to start thinking, writing, talking about it. You must have your own means of communication. Aapka, wo kya hai? I mean, do we have an equivalence of Twitter or, or, or Facebook or any of those vehicles? No. We are dependent on them and they can knock you out whenever they like. In the name of whatever their uh, ideals are. If they don't like you or what you're saying, they'll, they'll close you. So we have to do it on our own. This is Atma Nirvata. This is what we have to do. And it happens slowly. It doesn't happen overnight. If you don't start now, it will never happen. So get your story right. Get it out first. Otherwise, it's considered a reaction. And that first story holds. Use all the means of... Um, conveying your messages. It can be culture, it can be art, it can be newspapers and magazines, stories, books. And uh, your equivalent of WhatsApps and stuff like that. Because that's, that's where technology is going. So unless we have our own systems developed now for the future, uh, and keep depending on imported stuff. You, 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 that's that's what they don't want us to do. Actually, nationalism means they will make their own equipment, they will make their own medicines, they will make their own vaccines. Yeah, quite so, right. <laughs> so they, they will they will consume the resources I want and then sell me things that I'm making. That is also a part of uh, the reason why they, they, this, they probably don't like what we're doing. Why is this sudden urge of criticism in the Western media? How big stories, and saying incorrect, making incorrect statements. Forget, forget uh, Thornburg or whatever the name is. They matter for nothing. So, we need icons, we need uh, heroes, we need you know, people that uh, we, we look up to. And there has to be more than one. And there has to be not just uh, from one province or one state. They have to be from different parts for different reasons, from different abilities. And the state can't do all this. For two reasons, it doesn't have the capacity and quite often the bureaucrat doesn't have the imagination. So it has to be done by the society. It has to be done by you and I and everybody else. You know, we can't be, a, let it be a nanny state teaching us and doing everything for us. We have to do it ourselves. If you, if you take pride in your country, you want to do progress, then that's how to do it. If you don't take it, then forget it. Then stay that's at right. home and... Uh, that is how, if you re remember this uh, Operation Toolkit, one of the things that was said, that mm. uh, you disrupt the chai and yoga image, or whatever yeah. is there, also, yeah. you disrupt yeah. it. And of course, yeah. our so-called liberals, uh, they join this uh, gladly. Because they are uh, yeah. they are playing like uh, See, what is called. This is this is this is how the whole system works. This is a counter narrative coming from there. Do you think this uh, fellow, what was his name, this chap who's supposed to have given two point five million dollars to this? That's Rihanna. Haliwal. Uh, Mol Haliwal. So how, how does he get that money? Is he so rich? Does he get contributions? And when did they start collecting this money? There's an organization, there's planning, there is... I'm sure they even decided where they, they cased the area around Delhi. Ke is blockade. 
And who runs that economy of that system, that uh, blockade? How many people are there? 10,000? 20,000? Who feeds them? From the basic amenities to bedtime, who gives it to them? How did they organize it? I said, you organize it. Chale aaj shaam koot ke chal diye aur ho gaya kal se subah shuru. It has been planned. Meticulously to the finest detail. Quite right. Uh, uh, we got a lot of questions, sir. So uh, let's move to the question and answer round. Press the bell icon on YouTube and don't miss another update. Rumi, how do we change it and for good? What's the government's contribution to this? I think you, you said that. Too. I already I answered that. I said that we've got to, the society has to do it. We've got to take pride in ourselves and our systems and and highlight them and, and, and uh, tell the world that we are not just snake charmers and beggars on the street and that cows roaming around with a caption underneath saying Hindus worship cows. You know, that's that's the stock story that we used to get when we were kids. That has to change. If you are going to be this the one of the largest co manufacturers of vaccine, everybody should know. Many people are still surprised. They don't know. Many care. Most of us are surprised. Indians also. So those are things we talk about. We tell them we we'll, we will China gives you the virus, we give you medicines. That's the difference. Here's right. a story which is which is up for us to grab. Correct. And why should we expect the government to do it? Absolutely. Uh, next yeah. question, sir. Uh, Ravindra, Sikh Muslim politicians in Canada and Liberal NDP or Conservative Party are anti-India. Same is in US. Both Dem and Republican, S oblique M, are anti-India. Why Hindu politicians uh, not having tribalism? Also, ban Twitter. Hmm. Okay, you ban Twitter, but the story goes around anywhere elsewhere. Then what do you do? You don't hear the story, but the rest of the world knows what they want to hear or what they want to tell. That's Banning is not always an answer. Banning is not an answer. Competition is. You set up your own system. And then if you like, don't do the, the Chinese way. That doesn't work in a democracy. And, and um, the other thing, the question about Indian uh, politicians, was that Indian or Hindu politicians they don't have tribalism? I really don't understand the question, except that... Uh, that is that is why yes, there, is, do there, not is, a, 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 there is there is there was a chart I saw this morning. Uh, I don't know which newspaper about how Indians behave towards India. Okay, those who've been the older ones still have links. The Indian-born older residents. And the Indian, uh, the American born older residents still believe in, have some links with India. The young don't. So they are, they are being taught what they are being taught there by others. We are not, the Hindu is just not, in, the, the Indian is not interested. The young Indian is just not interested. He's found his place and he's settled there. Right, the so next one. Kedar Deshpande, pranam to both. Do we still need to rely on major corporates such as Twitter, FB, or creating alternate platform is the need of the R? I think you just said that, that we need to uh, yeah. have corporate. So uh, I think we can take the next question then. Mandar Karnik, confidence of a civilization builds narrative. British destroyed our confidence. Brown Sahibs had no concept of identity, only of position barter to them by the British. How do we rebuild? 
You know, I I find that the 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 younger people, the younger Indian, has a lot more confidence in himself, in his abilities, than we did. We I was in the transitional phase, sort of. The British had gone, but I was still influenced by what they was they had left behind. But I find that uh, my my children, for instance, they have a, they have a different take on everything. We are already getting out of this. Um, it could have happened earlier. It should have happened earlier, but it didn't uh, because uh, there was a desire to preserve a certain kind of way of life. Everybody was quite content with what they had achieved and got, and didn't want to disrupt that. But now you, you see that what we call B town boys and girls, they 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 are self confident. They are not shy. They they don't care if they don't speak good English, but they know what they want to do, and that's what they should be doing. My only my only uh, reservation is. That I think it was a mistake to raise the school leaving age and lower the age of voting, ability to vote. Uh, uh, what is the word? Uh, voting age was reduced to 18. So you find that a boy who just left school or a girl who just left school is is able to vote, and the politicians have used that. And we get politics into our system much too early. Studies should be studies, nothing else, no politics. हम तो सोला सोला पे गए थे कॉलेज और एमए तक वोटिंग राइट नहीं थे. I didn't have a voting right till I was 21. I was एमए then. Yeah, so he's probably going to get a second chance. So that's that. That is bad. Your youth has to be kept apolitical for some time longer. He must be aware of what is going on. I'm not saying that. I mean, our history should be maybe rewritten in many places, many cases, from beginning to end. Of course, uh, there will be a lot of noise if you start doing it, as uh, as you should. But we have to we have to give facts as they were. Why why don't we talk so at all about uh, Bhagat Singh or Bose or any of the South Indian leaders? No. Or oh, the Ahom leaders, we don't. Our history is that way, is confined to Delhi and surroundings. The history is not of the history of the people; it's the history of kings and emperors. So we have to have a different look at ourselves and have confidence that we can do it, and don't just leave it to the government. Right. Uh, next one. Why are how removing controversial Twitter? Why Twitter or American company accounts are attacked on for suppression of freedom of speech, free internet? Nothing happens on Chinese app bans. Chinese app bans. Nothing happens means. I mean, there was no uh, Allah ko Allah on Chinese when the Chinese apps were banned, mm. but. Uh, Twitter ban uh, excites a lot of people. Otherwise, mm. that's what he's asking. Well, the difference is that the Chinese were attacking you physically and killing your soldiers, and uh, and then uh, expecting that we will continue to behave normally. That is the one difference. Mm -hmm. And the other is that Twitter is uh, is supposed to be a social service. It's a media for use by all of us. And uh, of course, they make money out of it, but um, 
it, it was not perhaps considered as lethal as uh, a Chinese attack on your soldiers in Galwan. Right. Uh, let's take the next question. Chaitanya, so Chinese or Japanese architecture was inspired for Indian temples, but why we are not able to improve our architecture today? I, I don't know about architecture. Why are we not able to improve? I, I, I can take this question because I have been interacting with uh, Abhas Maldayar, who is an architect by profession. And he says mm -hmm. that our architect schools of architecture have been completely overtaken by leftists. Oh, God. Even there? Even there. So what, what are they building? Mausoleums? So they are only building what is called squares and rectangles. And they have forgotten all the aesthetics yeah. and uh, beauty that was yeah. there with us. They must have built Udyog Vihar and... Uh, uh, Krishi Bhavan in Delhi. Krishi Bhavan Bhavan and Krishi Bhavan in Delhi. <laughs> you can't have worse. Ugly monstrosities. <laughs> Next one. Guru Rajesh Pandey, Namaste Sanjay, you are doing great service to Bharat Mata. When will you come on Ku? I am already there. <laughs> I mentioned it in fact. I put it on Twitter. Purposely, hmm. so that Twitter also knows that I am on Ku. But I think you hmm. missed it on Twitter. Is 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 Ku working? Ku is working. It has bugs, but uh, yes, uh, I think it will take a little while to stabilize. They they they, they will start when, when Twitter started. They will huh? When Twitter started, it had similar problems. Mm -hmm. No, but I think they will try and scuttle it, damage it. Sabotage it. That, uh, that they can always transport to Indian servers if mm. they try. That, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. <clears throat> Chaitanya, sir, India and Japan partner to make an animated movie of Ramayana, which is there in YouTube, which created a very good narrative in Indian culture abroad. Do you think this is a way forward? Yes, it is. Absolutely. I mean, you should. Uh, we should also get together with Indonesia and do it. For. Now, told we have uh, Hindus in Bali, and uh, they, they, so far the Islam of Indonesia is largely different from the rest of the world. So we should take advantage of that. Correct. Because they, they uh, quite often I've heard Indonesians say that Islam is my religion, but Hinduism is my culture. Next question. Hindu genocide versus Jew genocide. Uh, what he means is that the Jew genocide is known to everybody, but Hindu genocides are completely lost. You 300,000 um, Hindus came from Kashmir and we didn't say anything about them. So that's our uh, way of not doing anything. <laughs> yes, and that's as recent Kashmiri, as Kashmiri pundits were ignored by everybody. Uh, yes, that's that's how we have to get our uh, um, narratives back. Yeah. Uh, I believe uh, Vivek Agnotri is making a film, the Kashmir Chronicles or something, the Kashmir Diary. Actually, mm. that should come handy. Yeah. Yeah. Namaste, sir. Loved reading the ultimate goal. How does Indian intelligence agency agencies <laughs> how does intelligence agency handle political leaders who are clearly compromised? Ah, that's a secret one. <laughs> we don't handle political leaders in India. <laughs> I mean, RW never did. <laughs> that's what I need to handle. Yeah. Ask them, I don't know anything. That's like a spy. <laughs> so, Chaitanya, so Chinese even today use the censor institution, an institution under king, who keep an eye on officials where there are any institution in ancient India which are 
relevant today. <laughs> Prime Minister made a very sweeping statement today. They said that bureaucrats shouldn't be running every institution. So I think <laughs> bureaucrats shouldn't be running every institution. He's right. He that today in Parliament. He's right. He's right. He's right. <laughs> sure is going to close many institutions to give it to a bureaucrat. <laughs> really, I'm a bureaucrat, but I know it. <laughs> yes, I, I also know that. Very yeah. well. So, there are lots of talented people in our country. There's lots of um, uh, very talented. And why should patriotism be the birthright of a bureaucrat? Hardly, I think he is probably the least patriotic. He is patriotic. Yes, he is only largely interested in himself. On his career, that's all. <laughs> he is interested in himself. <laughs> exactly. So uh, uh, we should we should tap in. We should tap into all the resources that we have, human resources. Right, right. I think just as an aside, I think what mm -hmm. the, uh, the two speeches that the prime minister made yesterday in Rajya Sabha mm -hmm. and uh, one today in uh, Parliament. They are something of a narrative setting kind of speeches, if yeah. they are taken to logical conclusions. Uh, Queen Ursula, Sanjay sir, I would request you to please do more sessions about our ancient kings. It was really amazing to learn about kings like Lalita Dathya, one king a week. We are doing a history series and a mm -hmm. lot of things. I think we will have Ashoka next. And, it's, uh, on, it's on uh, YouTube or... Uh... No, it's on our channel. We are now. Yeah. We started a series on history, so uh, we will be bringing a lot of these ancient, so forgotten, your, uh, forgotten pieces of take, history. What's your take on Ashoka? Are you giving a new trend or the old one? Oh, that's a. I am not giving it the Nehruian touch. It's <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Because it was glorified, according to me, Ashoka was never treated as a great king in our own chronicles, in the history uh, written by the Indians. It is only in the history written by Westerners, and that also after 1925, after Princeton. And uh, for political reasons, because uh, Prime Minister always liked to keep Hindus in their place, he glorified Ashoka. Uh, I think, I don't know whether you've read uh, Sanjeev Sanyal and some other people who have brought out the yeah. uh, true history. The so true, true nature, true. yeah. yeah. I'll talk about. Hmm. Shethi Jagarwal, we have been importing many weapons from Israel. Why can't we import the tactics and intent of eliminating the threat for nation from Mossad? Does he get 100 rupees if I answer or he gets it anyway? No, no, he's giving us 100 rupees to ask questions. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet of him. <laughs> so this is the way of contributing to our channel. That's how we... Oh, great. I thank him for that. But uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you too much about Mossad in India. Okay. I'm, you can I'm, just I'm, positive I'm, or negative. Nothing, nothing can. The relationship is very good. Full stop. Okay, that's 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 great. Uh, Roger Viga, Sanjay Ji, Vikram Ji, why is Evangelist Jagan ready not arrested for outstanding financial crimes? He is an active FBI case evangelist. This is not really the question for this episode. So no, I really uh, have no idea. Also, what what Jagan Reddy is up to? So. This is off yeah, topic. You're right. This, this is this is not our. Our topic this today. is not our topic today. Uh, next. Uh, Arjun Sharma, Jain, sir, do we get too timid and righteous when it comes to narrative building and are we too trusting of our ally allies? Thank you. First part is true. We get very righteous very soon and, and uh, perhaps timid. Go to the second part uh, question. Can I have a look at it again? Are we too trusting of our allies? We don't have many allies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We didn't care to build many. Uh, 
Ritesh, could you please share your opinion if there are any unseen nefarious power players behind companies like Twitter, FB, and if yes, what could be their ultimate political goals? Twitter and Facebook and all these companies are in the business of making money. Essentially, that's how they start. And thereafter, they are, uh, they are American. They will have American points of view, essentially. Given a choice between them and us, they will choose themselves naturally. So if you're going to have to deal with them to use their system, you've got to follow their rules. That's how systems work. If they can decide that they don't want this president of the United States, supposedly the world's strongest man on Twitter, they can ban him. So they have power, they have money, they have interests, and they need not be pro you, they will be pro wherever they are. Okay, so next question. Arjun Sharma, Trump was a means to an end, but can we achieve the same results with Biden and Harris? As she has suddenly embraced woke secular Indian side by idle marketing. Does she have any right to call herself Indian? That's too many questions in one. <clears throat> American policy like Indian policy, foreign policy, they run normally in a, two parallel bars or streams. Overall, the direction is the same. You just, maybe the style of working changes or the stress changes. You either drive on the right, right side of the lane or the left side, the fast lane or the slow lane. I don't think the, the Americans will uh, ignore India. They may give China a different uh, uh, priority. They may give India a little bit of tough time on various issues because that suits their, their, their domestic constituency. Human rights, and democracy and freedom. And that also is because we have not been able to sell our story right in America. Quite right. Next and, one. Uh, so that will continue. Yes. Mm -hmm. So does our intelligence contribute to narrative building? I don't know. <laughs> OK. Uh, sir, is ISI winning the cyber war against India? I think, you know, uh, you can't, this is not a football match that you can know the results. It's, a, a cyber war is a secret war. Sometimes they will score a few things, sometimes we will score. But don't underestimate them and don't overestimate yourselves. So uh, this will happen. They will make attempts at you and we have to do it likewise. This is a new style of warfare. It will continue. Right. Uh, next one. Kunal Sarkar, consider this. Reinvigorate monuments like Martha and Temple with the help of AI and involve Indians the world over in this reconnecting with their past. Not a bad idea at all. Yes, a pretty good idea. But how do you do it with AI? I don't know. That's I'm I'm not technology savvy that way. So whatever it whatever it gives, whatever it takes, do it. I, think I can give him a suggestion. Why don't you provide a prototype? Let's see how it works. Hmm. Yeah. Neelima Patiji, thank you for your Patram Pushpam. Rahul Prabhakaran, would narrative emerge at the at 
10 trillion economy if you don't control your narrative you won't reach there <laughs> but that should be the goal yes and for reaching there you need to control your narrative and this is what uh, this book is saying that we are talking about yeah are western countries open enough to assimilate new narrative of india it takes time but it will happen once you are a success story they will buy anything quite right manas how did the nazis master the art of propaganda those days were different from what they are today they 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 you know for a, for a, for a for a bad for the bad guy to succeed the good have to keep quiet that's essentially what happened in germany the exactly. people who didn't agree with the nazis just didn't say anything they accepted it yes that's, it has happened that fear and threat worked right thank so, you uh, congratulations on your book in light of the current battle narratives the farmers protest what do you think the government mm. machinery should have done to control or influence it better i think the government did a pretty good job exactly <laughs> i was pretty angry on 26th but now i think because it was bad side. optics i agree that was bad optics but had a bullet been fired had two guys died they would have gone to town it was tremendous restraint i think it was very hard for the my, my greatest uh, compliments to the police force outnumbered and outmaneuvered that they didn't hit back it takes courage it takes courage so 300 300 policemen injured can you imagine in another country there would have been tanks rolled out i think they won the battle uh, on 26 the government they won, won the, the battle. battle of narratives that's the day the, the indian government won the battle of narratives exactly now they now they're saying that how many 80 have died farmers have died in this <laughs> struggle and who's to be blamed the government didn't kill them. You guys killed them. Yes. You brought them there in the cold. You brought them there, promised everything and nothing has happened. You're getting nothing. Exactly. How can you take extra constitutional measures to undo a constitutional process? This is not an occupying government. This is your own government that has been elected democratically exactly. by us. It is my government too. And you yourselves have been saying that these laws are bad, they should be changed. Punjab government has said it. Mr. Sharad Pawar has been talking about Why doesn't he walk the talk now? I think they are following the classical, uh, uh, is. what is called is. The, the radical playbook or the urban axel playbook. That's, that's the one that is being followed by them. But uh, apparently it's uh, not working. Two reasons. One is that the government won the battle of narratives, and the second one is that the government did not budge on the laws. I think the two reasons. Exactly. That's a tactical error they made. If they had said it differently, that they want to discuss the laws, give us some concession, that might have worked. But this one wasn't going to work. Yes. Uh, Venu, sir, I am from Kerala. There is a deliberate circulation of fake narratives by commies, Islamists, and many literal, literate Hindus are falling for it. How wrong is this? Even my close friend is blind to this. Is there any hope? Well, there is. Uh, that is a pity also because there is a lot of people who have bought into the stories. And um, I think the whole thing starts with how they view the present government and how vocal they have been since then. 
the defenders have not been vocal enough. They've been more apologetic. And, but uh, you just have to uh, counter the arguments. What else can you do? And it's a, it's, it's a, it's a long grind. It's a long, hard grind. It's not that easy. Yeah. Swamis have been doing it for donkey's years and they're experts at it. Yeah. They've done it for, for decades. Yes. But at least get going somewhere. That's what I would advise this young man. Uh, yeah. no, we, have to, we have to not to back off. Exactly. Chaitanya, so Ukraine has a ministry of temporarily occupied territories to create a narrative and strategies on Crimea. Should India also have one on Kashmir? Kashmir so is ours. We don't need another narrative. Because okay, exactly. to us. That uh, uh, removal yes, of is not going anywhere. Is the strongest narrative. Uh, Ayush Mishra, sir, are CITX and CITJ still active? What is that? I don't know. <laughs> CITX and CITJ. Oh, Narani. Good evening, sir. Do you think George Soros is going to let a nationalist government succeed? Well, uh... Whether he likes it or not, we've got to succeed in any case. We don't have a choice. We can't let him win. So, uh, George Soros may wish something, he may dislike the Prime Minister, he may dislike Hindu nationalism, whatever. It doesn't matter. He makes, he makes life difficult, but it's not, uh, not that he's going to succeed. I don't look at it like that. Right. So this is the book, The Ultimate Goal, an X-Raw of the X-Raw Chief Deconstruct How Nations Construct Nations Narratives. Huh. Nations Construct Narratives. So this is the book that we have been talking about. Uh, please go to Amazon and buy this book. And... Uh, I have had a wonderful time reading this. I'm sure you will also have a very good time reading it. And uh, it is so full of anecdotes and stories and one-liners that it will keep you focused and you'll it will keep you glued all the while. That's that's what I can promise. So thank you, sir. Thank you for having me. Thank very much. Great talking to you. Sharing your thoughts. Wonderful time having you. Take care. Jai Hind. Take care. Jai.